Good morning. Uh, running a little behind today because I had some errands to run, but we're here. I'm really close to on time, so I think so far success. So today's topic is learning to love. So I kind of want to talk a little bit about how I went from kind of not really liking myself, having some really big depression kind of issues, and kind of got here to a really good spot and what it takes to kind of stay there. So it's something that doesn't always get asked or come up because most people just assume that you're really confident and it even came up when I had a coffee with somebody. They said, you just seem like you have it all together. I don't, but thank you for telling me I look like I do. <laughs> that made my day. So most people don't have it all together. You might have it together for a little bit or you might have a really good routine going, but I don't think there's a single person who believes that they have it all together. There's always something going wrong or something that could be better or something, something, something. <laughs> so uh, I always like to start these kind of the way I did the last video about kind of not having a lot of people, uh, kind of being bullied a lot and kind of working with my self-confidence and building myself up over the years, um, I figured out I just kind of have to learn to like myself first. Because if you don't like yourself, you will accept anyone else's behavior that seems remotely kind because it's a lot kinder than you are treating yourself. So if you really don't like yourself and somebody says, hey, you know, let's hang out and then takes advantage of you, it still feels a lot better than not having anybody not even yourself. So you have to learn to like yourself in order to set up a good standard of behavior. So if you think you're worth something, then you're going to ask for it. If you're selling something, like if I decide to sell, you know, a ring or a TV set or whatever, you go by the value of it. Let's say I bought a $500 TV, I've used it for five years, it's still in good order. Probably won't sell it for 500 but I know that it's close to that in worth. So if I try to sell it, I'll know how much it costs and if somebody says, hey, I'll give you five bucks for it, you know that's a bad deal. We have to learn to do that for ourselves. You have to look at yourself and say, I'm worth this and not take anything less than that because you're devaluing yourself when you do that. So the next, if you did sell that TV for five bucks, the next time they might sell it for four or one dollar or five cents or they might even give it away for free, even though it's worth a lot more than that and it's still in good condition. So another thing is a lot of people tend to think that they're not in great condition. You know, they've had some rough years, they've not been treated well, they haven't been taken care of, they're kind of feeling like they're falling apart. You don't have to stay that way. The same way with cars, TVs, any sort of other thing, you can fix it. You can make it better than it was before. You can get it back to its original condition. It doesn't mean that it's the exact same, but it's working again and it's doing everything that it's supposed to and it could even do a little bit more. You have to take care of yourself the way you would anything else. So if you're not feeling that great, which the uh, last couple weeks have been kind of hard on me, I've realized last week I was waking up with a lot of anxiety and I was I couldn't get the energy to come wake up and get out of bed because it just, I felt like I was failing because I was told that I wasn't doing good at my job and I lost it and I kind of feel like I don't do enough around the house since I'm, that's all I'm doing. It feels like I should be a lot harder on myself. And so it was kind of rough last week for me. So I decided, okay, I'm going to have to take care of myself. So I made a really big effort and it doesn't sound like a lot but I tried to do things that made me happy and not feel guilty about it and that as easy as that sounds it is probably one of the hardest things that you can do <laughs> so I had to say you know what I know there's dishes in the sink I know that there's some laundry that still needs to be folded but I just I need to sit outside and I just want to sit outside and play a game on my phone or read a book or just sit for an hour or two hours and just be. And the first time I did it, I felt like I was being lazy. I felt like I wasn't accomplishing anything and I wasn't doing anything, but, you know, after about an hour, 
two hours of just sitting outside and letting the cats run around and watering my plants and just kind of relaxing, I felt like I was good to go, to go and do the dishes and start cleaning the house. And I got a lot done. But you have to get over that initial hump of, you know, oh, I should be doing this or I should be doing more, or, you know, you're not a priority because you ought to be. Because if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anyone else, you can't take care of anything else. So you have to learn to take care of yourself. Even though it might feel at the time like, oh, you know what, I can't take a day off because, you know, they need me and it just won't run the same without me or everything will fall apart or they're counting on me. And if you really need it, it doesn't hurt you to ask. And if they can spare you for that day, don't spend it feeling guilty like, oh, I should have been there and oh, I should have done this and oh, now I'm going to have to catch up on all of this. Just put it away and it might take a little time and practice, but put it away and do what you needed to do and the reason that you took the day off. If that meant just not getting out of bed all day just because that's the kind of day you need or if that's just finally moving that furniture that you said you've been going to move for weeks or putting up those picture frames that you just they've been sitting around for months and you just never got around to it you know doing the little things that just never got done not were never made a priority for you so take care of yourself first and i know it's really difficult because i don't have a job and i'm still struggling with trying to take care of me because it feels like, no, well, I'm letting my husband down because I should be cleaning the house and I should be making sure that there's nothing left for him to do here. No. I need to make sure that I'm okay and then I need to take care of the next thing then. Once I feel better, once I've, you know, put the effort to make myself a cup of coffee or make breakfast today or make lunch today and it sounds like it's not a lot for me for most people you know go have breakfast that is one of the really big things that i've always struggled with i i'm not anorexic or bulimic but it's hard for me to find myself worth the effort to get up and do something so when i was at home i used to have my mom that would always you know get up go make breakfast and so it was more like a checklist task and i she asked me to do it and i gotta listen to her and i did it when it's just me at home, it's really difficult for me to say, okay, take time and go make breakfast. It's like, mm, I could do that, use that energy to do something else, or it's not really that important, or I can wait. And then hours go by and it's three o'clock and my husband gets off at four o'clock and I just either haven't eaten or I just maybe munched on something because I got really hungry. And it's not because I'm concerned about my weight or anything like that. It's just I couldn't find the effort to get up and actually take care of myself because I wasn't a priority. And that adds up over time. You burn out a lot quicker when you don't take care of yourself. You get tired. You start to mess up on the little things, whether that's, you know, I forgot to do a thing or I don't have the energy to quite do it with as much gusto as I usually do or I have to take you know, a little bit more time here and there and everything just takes a little longer and it's the same way with your car. If you don't change the oil, it'll eventually stop running because it gets all gunky and it's not working anymore or you just run out of oil and it's running dry and it costs you so much more to fix that than if you just change the oil in your car. And people are the same way. You have to take care of yourself. If you don't feed yourself you will get hungry and eventually you'll just pass out and somebody will have to take you to the hospital a hospital bill is a lot more than making a meal and it's a lot more effort it's a lot more time than just taking the what 10 minutes it takes to pour, your, pour yourself a bowl of cereal it seems like a lot to ask to have you know need time to take care of yourself whether that's I just, I need to sit down and paint my nails because I like doing it and it bothers me that I haven't done it. Or I need to take the time to fix my hair or do my makeup or wear something nice and not just a t-shirt because, well, I'm not going anywhere nice. If all it takes is to do a little something extra for yourself, 
it is worth the time and effort it takes to do that because there is so much more benefit from taking care of yourself than ignoring yourself or not creating yourself a priority. And it seems like it should be easier to, you know, do when you have more people counting on you, but it actually gets harder. When it was just me, I just kind of moseyed around and I actually got to feeding myself a lot more frequently or, you know, actually did more stuff and read books and felt a little bit better. Now that it's me and my husband, I feel like, okay, well, I need to make sure, you know, when he gets home, the house is clean or the dishes have to be done or the dinner has to be ready or this or that. And when it was just me in my apartment, whenever I had like time between jobs or between looking for something or whatever, if it was on the weekends, I could have the messiest apartment on Saturday and then just clean it on Sunday. And I was absolutely okay with that. And it worked for me because I just enjoyed Saturday. And then Sunday I was like, all right, this is chore day because you didn't take care of stuff on Saturday. And we just took care of it. And But here, I feel like I need the house to be impeccable every day. Because if it's not impeccable, then I'm not doing my job. Or I'm wasting my time at home. Or whatever the thing is for that day. And that's not true. You're doing the best you can. You're putting the effort. You're taking care of yourself. You just might have a different schedule than somebody else. And that's also where talking to the people who care about you comes in. I finally just talked to my husband and I said, you know, I don't know, I just, I feel like I'm failing because I'm not getting enough done every day. And he looked at me and he said, the picture frames are finally up, the living room looks a lot more organized, the kitchen looks great. What are you talking about? The laundry's always done, the cat's litter box is always clean. You're doing fine. And sometimes that's all you need is to someone to point out the effort that you're putting into something and that it's okay if he comes home and the dinner's not done. We'll just have to figure out what dinner's going to be and make it together. Or he'll use the time to sit down and play video games and I will make dinner and that's how that day works. He gets a little extra time by himself to relax and to take his mind off of work and now I get to do dinner. It's not time wasted when you take care of yourself. And it can feel that way, especially if you feel like you should be doing other things. Like if you're a mom, it feels like you should be taking care of your kids and not taking care of yourself when they need something. But you're teaching them when you're not taking care of yourself. You're teaching them that other people are a bigger priority than yourself. If you are overly critical of yourself, that's the things that you teach them as a parent. And that's why it's really important, especially when you're taking care of other people, to take care of yourself. If, you know, you, I could say, taking care of my kids because one just jumped up on the bed. If I don't take care of myself, who takes care of them? Because after a while, I'll either be too tired to do it or I'll forget or I'll be frustrated and I don't have the energy to do it or I don't have the time to do it because I never took the time to take care of them. When you are building a house, you make sure that the foundation is laid correctly so that everything else can be built on top of it. You are the foundation of your life. If you don't take care of yourself and set yourself up for success, failure is going to follow. There's going to be cracks and there's going to be faults and when you do something wrong because you're tired or you're hungry or you're distracted or you're burnt out or you're tired or depressed or anxious and you haven't been taking care of yourself, you could make mistakes and you could mess something up or you could do it wrong or you could not care. You can end up being angry when you're putting in the nails for picture frames and punch a hole in the wall. Didn't happen to me fortunately, but it can happen. A lot more work goes into fixing mistakes than it is to prevent them. And that's the biggest slogan for everybody who does construction or is working in a mechanic shop. If you're taking care of yourself and you're being safe and doing it right the first time, it's a lot of time saved versus if you try to take a shortcut or you're just doing it without regards to safety, that's when accidents happen. And accidents are a lot more expensive than doing it right and taking a little more time. So that was something that I have been struggling with 
mostly just because there is a very negative kind of idea around staying home. So if you're a housewife and you're staying home, your job is easier and you have it made and you don't have any rights to complain and you aren't contributing or whatever that, that other people will say isn't true. You still feel stressed out, you still feel worried because the finances are tight. There was another person in the house that could be working. If, you know, something goes wrong or the house doesn't get cleaned on time or, 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 all of the ors of things that could be going wrong or things that are not getting done and you have a full-time job staying at home, whether that's being a full-time parent, which is probably like two full-time jobs, <laughs> or just staying at home and cleaning because you have your list of things that you have to do. My biggest point with this one is take care of yourself because you're worth it, because you are just as important as anyone else. And if you're happier, the people around you are happy. And if that doesn't work, my other thing is you wouldn't treat somebody else like that. So why do you treat yourself like that? If you think about your younger siblings or your partner or your parents or your best friends, if they felt guilty or they couldn't find the effort to make themselves breakfast in the morning, you'd be a little upset with them, wouldn't you? you would get up on your soapbox and you would tell them just get up and pour yourself a bowl of cereal or make some scrambled eggs or put that microwave rice in, in for a minute and let it cool down and eat it you would make sure that they were taking care of themselves so why not yourself probably a shorter video today but i hope you got something good out of it and i will see you tomorrow Thanks for watching.